What's up, everybody? This is Dave Mandanka of The Breakdown Show. What's happening, Audley Stevenson? We're here hanging out with my boy Tim. And, of course, The Breakdown Book. That's the book, that, Dave, that's the book we got out right now, man. Yes, yes. Basketball talk the way it should be. Everybody's got to get it. Groups fans are going to love it. It's got great quotes from our past guests. Funny, inspiring, all rolled up into one. Yeah, the be- and the best part about it is that we're supporting a couple of great charities uh, that are near and dear to our heart. Uh, and, yeah, proceeds are helping them out. Uh, the the uh, Aaron O. Kids Foundation, Epilepsy, Halton and Peel. Uh, it's a great cause, man. you gotta got to support the cause. Exactly. The BreakdownBook.com, that's where you get it. I got the notion that uh, they mouth is open and uh, all that's just talking when uh, they ain't comparing to me, they ain't comparing to me, they ain't comparing to me. Take a closer look and you see they ain't comparing. Yo guys, what's going on? We got Audley and Dave of the BreakdownShow.com. Uh, they do a great show. Glad to have them on. We've had some good debate. Again, check out their book, buy it. A link and everything will be in the description box. We, you got to check this out. There's sample paragraphs, everything. You got to check this book out. Um, now, assuming there is a season next season, which I don't believe there will be, but if there would be a season next year, which there's certainly a shot of, who becomes a favorite if things hold up the way they are? Let's say Dwight Howard doesn't go to the Lakers. He kind of stays put, at least for the beginning of the season. The Lakers stay put how they are. Uh, I would assume the Heat are going to stay put how stay put how they are. I think most people think about the Mavericks as a team that got hot. They're still going to be a contender, but you got to really question whether they're going to be an NBA Finals team again. You got the Thunder, maybe even the Grizzlies. Um, I think the Celtics might be past making a run, but you you don't know. But uh, who, who do you guys look at as the favorite for the NBA season next year to win it all? Miami Heat, <laughs> South Beach. You, you want to think about that there? Yeah, yeah. Miami Heat. No, they're gonna be thirsty and hungry. And you know Pat Riley, he's gonna add some more pieces, man. He's gonna say, you know what, Mike, baby, you're out of here. Any other other those guys are like just pylons. You're out. Getting some talent. <laughs> I, you know, I'll, I'll take a different approach because uh, you know I, I've always believed that you know you out of just sheer respect that you got to you got to give a nod to the champs. You got you can't. I mean, they they have they've done everything to they've earned that title to be called champs, and they haven't done anything to suggest that they uh, can't duplicate or come close to doing that. Because really, you know, you've got a, a team now, and you know, and I remember you know hearing Dwayne Wade talk about this after he won his first title that you know people think that yeah because you win you're satisfied. Well, after you win that first title, you're even hungrier and you want to win it again. So, you know, I, I look at the Dallas Mavericks and really, you know, th- th- there's no reason why they themselves can't retool and get a bit better. Uh, it's not that they need, uh, you know, a whole bunch of pieces to, to, to be a better team or maintain what they've got. So, I mean, I, I, I think out of, if, if, we, if we don't look or consider the Mavericks, we're disrespecting the champs. Yeah, and I think that the Lakers overall probably have the most talented roster. You got Kobe, Gasol, Odom, uh, Bynum, a bunch of other guys, Meta World Peace. But um, <laughs> I think there's there's a few things there that are like problems waiting to happen. I think Ron Artest normally in most places he's been is good for one year, and they got that. And I think last year he just wasn't in it. And I think Andrew Bynum has gotten to the point where he. He's tired tired of not be. He wants to be the man, which is why it makes sense for him to be traded to Orlando for Dwight Howard. And um, you know, his head just didn't seem into it. He seemed like in that series when I believe Kobe called him out in the Mavs series, he wanted to be the guy. He wanted to be that guy that put the team on his back. And he's not going to be that with Kobe Bryant on his team or even Pau Gasol on his team. And I, I think that there's some issues there that are unresolved. I think they're taking a massive downgrade in coaching. For the Heat, I mean, they're two wins away from winning last year. And I think that uh, when you have two of the probably top five players in the NBA, and then you got another guy who's... Uh, it's tough to rank Chris Bosh because he's such a poor defender. 
But when, when he's on, this guy can really be a beast on offense. But he, he's probably top 15 in the NBA, I guess you would put him at. So they're right there. I don't know about the Mavericks, though. They, they've had a team similar to that for the past few seasons, and they weren't even really close. I mean, we saw them first or second round out, and I think a lot of part, part of it was them getting hot, but I think part of it was the Lakers melting down, and after that, they got the confidence we can beat anyone. I think the Thunder might become the favorite to come out of the West. Well, hey, until you prove it, until you do something, I mean, it's, it's, all that, all the speculation is nice, Tim, but until you actually pr do something, and, you know, what have you, what have you done? Yeah, that, that's true. I think they're going to get a, the Thunder are going to get a healthy Kendrick Perkins next year for the full season. They're going to have uh, Kevin Durant, certainly a few other pieces for them. I think that they have become a favorite. Now, the, Even with a Russ book whose play is always under scrutiny, who has been told that he's not a distributor, uh, who, who's shown that he has problems finding his superstars uh, that can score. I mean, I, if, if you look at, if, you, if you're evaluating teams, we got to evaluate what we have in front of us, right? Yeah, but with Russell Westbrook, the thing that I think people sometimes don't look at is how similar this guy's game actually is to Derrick Rose. He's yeah. like a poor man's Derrick Rose, and if people are going to put the Bulls in the discussion and say, well, Rose is going to put them on his back, when uh, Russell Westbrook is the second best player on the team, how can you not put the Thunder in the discussion? Well, I, I, you, you look at the makeup of the teams and what they need out of Russell to do, to be successful. And uh, they don't need Russell to score 30 points to win. Where the Bulls need Derrick Rose to score 30 points to win. And that's and that to me that's the that's the clear difference. Yeah, I, I just I see something clicking with Russell this off season. That's just a gut feeling, or maybe even next off season, that something's gonna click for him, and either he's gonna realize he's the second guy, or after the next season they might have to make a change. with who's gonna be with Durant there? But uh, Dave, what do you think? You know what? He needs to be a better decision maker. He is a turnover machine. And he'll turn over that ball, and he frustrates you at times. Tremendous talent, love his athleticism, but man, some some decisions he makes, you just think to yourself, what the hell is he doing? Like, why did you just cough it up, buddy? Come on, man, take care of that rock. <laughs> yeah, that is certainly true. Uh, anything else you guys want to add? Well, it, listen, you know, I, you know I, I want an NBA season two, and I think regardless, you know, what... Uh, you know, who, 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 you know, you know what happens with the whole with the whole Laco situation. Uh, there's enough talent to make uh, this league, this season, upcoming season, a very entertaining one. Yeah, especially if you have a short season, that might be a decent product for one year to watch. I think. Definitely. All right, uh, Audley and Dave from uh, the Breakdown Show dot com. They do a podcast. I've listened to it a couple times. It's actually it, I really enjoy listening to it. I listen to a few of the on demand episodes. They got a bunch of great guests on. Again, check out their book. All the info will be in the description. Anything you guys want to add on the book? Hey, hey listen, it's a great read. Um, uh, check out the the website for the book is thebreakdownbook dot com and and if there's any you know any doubt about you know the product uh, we've got a reviews and feedback page where um, readers of the book uh, have sent in their thoughts and we've got a whole bunch of testimonials from uh, a bunch of different experts out there uh, and by all means if you want if you again if you're if you're on the fence you're going yeah I don't know what this is all about check out the reviews and feedback that will help you make up your mind. And FYI, uh, hello, we got Steve Urkel with the forward. Come on, folks. <laughs> That's right. Where, where, where do you get that? Where do you get Steve Jaleel White Urkel doing the forward for basketball? Jeez, come on now. All right, uh, really enjoyed having you guys on. We'll have to do this again throughout the NBA season, throughout the NBA offseason. Thanks a ton, guys. Awesome. Thanks, man. Our pleasure.